Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology. We'll be starting the Egyptian campaign today. Egypt 1998. Five missions over the Arab Republic of Egypt. Restoring a stable government. And uh, let's soak up our stats one last time. All those medals. Okay, so we lost... Really? We only lost... Well, no, that wouldn't necessarily count some of our losses, I think, in uh, where we had more than one wingman. Uh, lots and lots of kills and hits and all gone. So, unfortunately, the ATF campaigns, unlike the USNF-97 campaigns, don't really have any cutscenes other than... I think there's one for medals, there's a generic one for victory, and then one for... Um, one for defeat, you know, if you fail five missions or whatever, and then one for, uh, you know, POW, KIA, that sort of thing. So, we have our first mission, Hourglass. Uh, Belusa Air Base, date June 23rd, local time, 0600 hours, weather clear. Situation, burdened by a stagnant economy, a rapidly expanding population, and a political elite indifferent to the plight of the growing underclass, Egypt teeters on the brink of full-blown civil war. The unemployed urban masses, despairing of their opportunities for advancement in the current secular order, have placed their faith in fundamentalist religious leaders. These clerics offer hope. Hope that a theocratic utopia can be won through violent revolution. At this moment, disaffected Muslims are challenging the government in and around Cairo. There is a reason to believe that Iran, Libya, and Syria, foreign governments opposed to Western economic influence in the region, are secretly supplying the fundamentalists with weapons and military advisors. While relatively little blood has been shed up until now, armed mobs have occupied several key government facilities, including three air bases. Tension among neighboring countries, Israel in particular. Uh. Oh, but also the richer Gulf states like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates is high. Led by the U.S. and Europe, the U.N. has agreed to allow peacekeeping forces to occupy the strategically vital Suez Canal region. U.S. and French squadrons have been deployed to several major air bases in Egypt, e Eastern Egypt. Mission objective: An Aurora spy plane suffered engine trouble during a high-altitude reconnaissance pass over Western Egypt. Two Mirage 2000s have taken off from a rebel-controlled air base and are currently on an interception course with the reconnaissance airplane. Take off from Belusa and escort the stricken spy plane back to base. You are authorized to attack and destroy any enemy aircraft that attempt to harm the, this high-asset value vehicle. Threat suppression data, ground opposition unknown, air opposition unknown. So as you may have figured out, we are now done with our exchange program with the Marines and now we're being loaned to the Air Force, unfortunately. Nothing against the Air Force, just love flying off carriers. So we see the Aurora is coming out from over the Mediterranean, so we're going to fly out and meet it, come back. Now the Aurora is a hypothetical, theorized, uh, supersonic or hypersonic reconnaissance plane. So we see, and uh, now we have an arsenal. Now, just as a heads, wait a second. That's interesting. Okay. So I'll probably be sticking mostly with the. Oh, okay. For this campaign, other than when they force you to use the B2 or the F117. I'll be using the F-22A for air superiority and probably this X-31 for uh, ground attack. Unless I can do it with a couple bombs because the F-22 does support some small bombs, I believe. In the future campaigns, we get the X-32, which was the Boeing, um, well, this game's hypothetical version, the yep, X-32, which was Boeing's um, bid for the Joint Strike Fighter project, which obviously didn't go through. But in those campaigns, I'll be using the, other than the Force B-2 and F-117, I'll use the F-22 for air superiority and then the X-32 for ground attack. So, since F-22 can't carry Mavericks, even though this game lets you, we're just going to go with our standard air-to-air -air loadout, and now it's time to take this beast for a ride. And that's all this is going to be, is a joy ride. There's our wingman. Actually, we should be able to get... Yeah, we can get maximum radar. A little slow on the uh, takeoff, but... 
let's get some super crews going now. Which I'm actually curious to see if the game models it. There's the Aurora. So we'll pull out an intercept course. And we see Mirage 2000s. Which I believe are our target. They don't respond to IFF identification. So for now, we'll go passive. And we can see we're at 100% throttle with no afterburners on, and we are approaching the speed of sound. There's our wingman forming up. And I believe at around 620 knots is the speed of sound, so we are. We have broken Mach 1. Which. There it is. The game gives you a nice sonic boom in your. Uh, Supersonic. Okay, we are. Do we have a. Ooh, we do have integrated infrared. That's useful. So, right now we are mission silent since, as a stealth fighter, we have next to no radar cross section. So, we want to get in as close as possible to these guys and then pounce on them. And I suppose we could slow down a little bit, let our let our wingman catch up a little bit. Now we still have, unfortunately, the same AMRAM as the um, the Ukraine and Pearl Islands campaign, which is a bit unfortunate that uh, they don't model the later versions. Even in there's a campaign in 2020, and even then they don't. You're, you're still trying to close to 10 nautical miles to get the best shot with your AM ramps, so... Okay, we have entered radar warning receiver range. Uh, okay. I don't see the, uh... I didn't see the Aurora. Oh, we have more enemies on our 8 o'clock. So we might be able to save ourselves some AM ramps here. Oh, they saw us. Contact. Now, there is something uh, a little different we have to do in that... Uh... Alright, Wingman, you can get the left one. I'll take the one on the starboard. Let's see. Uh, we have a misfire. Which is okay. And it looks like they don't model thrust vectoring on uh, on this F-22, which is unfortunate. I could have sworn they modeled it, but maybe I'm thinking of something else. But we're plenty maneuverable even without the thrust vectoring. Stop hogging all the kills, Mr. Wingman. Uh, we have more bandits over here. We have, it looks like, F5s. So let's go mission silent, see if we can get in behind them. Contact. Multiple bandits, you're 12 o'clock, 7 miles. Please advise. These ones are mine, Mr. Wingman. We're just gonna slip in right behind them. It looks like they don't see us. Opening the weapon bay doors. Contact. Bandits, you're 12 o'clock, 1 mile. Sidewinders away. Splash two. Splash two. All right. They didn't even see us, just like that uh, Iranian F four way back when. So let's meet back up with the Aurora. I don't see anything else on the RWR. Don't worry, we got your back, baby. And you can see for this uh, 
They're, they're not even going Mach 1 for this, which I assume is just to make it easier for the uh, player to catch up to him, I guess. Or just to give it more loiter time so that way you're forced to defend it longer. And we got that Egyptian sun making things difficult. There we go, I think we can speed up a bit. And we have F-15, so those have got to be ours. C variant, F-16, since they're not fighting. Yeah, those are ours too. But Egypt also, ah, there we go. I do not know if that's ours. I guess it's not ours. So let's uh, keep an eye on this guy. This guy could have Amrams, so he'd be able to engage from further away. So let's get the drop on him. Yep, he's uh, he's got a lot, but we are going super sand. Open the pot bay doors, Hal. And where's your buddy? Are they flying back? Woo! Hey, this is a. Uh, Multi-million dollar aircraft. I can't have you scratching the paint. And we went from supersonic to being only a little slower in the turn than this guy, really. I'm taking a shot. Right. Now it's an honest to god dog fight. Spoiler alert, I win. And I think that's all hostiles. Nearest bandit, 9 o'clock low. Thank you, AWAX. Nothing within 50 miles, so I think we're at... I think we're in the clear. Uh, there's the Aurora, looks like she's on a landing approach. So let's go and super cruise over there. So the, uh, I believe, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I believe the Egyptian makes we'd be facing here are going to be older, like, uh, probably somewhere between Block 15 and Block 30 F-16s. I don't know exactly what uh, the Air Force was using at the time. There's the Aurora hypersonic reconnaissance plane. The Flying Dorito. Look at that, four engines. Uh, notice that uh, this takes inspiration from, was it the XB-70 Valkyrie? I believe the designation was, which was a Mach 3 bomber. It was canceled um, because of its high cost, uh, surface-to-air missiles made speed irrelevant since a missile's always going to go faster than a plane. And then uh, there was an accident in which a starfighter crashed into it. Uh, F-105, not, you know, like a Viper or anything. But uh, it looks like the artist who made this plane took some inspiration from that. You got the Delta for high supersonic flight. All right, so we could probably get on our own landing approach. And uh, we're going to significantly slow down. It looks like we'll be landing at the same base as the Aurora, so hey, maybe we'll park right next to it. Alright, we're at 400 knots right now. Switch to navigation mode. Uh, target the airfield.
There we go. Probably bump it up to 17% thrust. More? Nah. Let's see how we go for now. No, up oh, there it is. Now, according to this, we need to dive a little bit. Now, you're really supposed to control your altitude with thrust while keeping your aircraft in a similar position, but we're gonna do this. Just 1% thrust, because the engines on this thing are ridiculously powerful, and with the internal weapons bay, there's very little drag. So, let's get the brake on. As you can see, only now at like about 140 knots are we actually starting to lose altitude. I take that back, we're still gaining. There, now we're... 60 knots before we went into a stall. See if we can't gently set her down. Here, down she Welcome is. Back. So we'll use our momentum to taxi around now. And hopefully we'll get better with the airfield landings. I'm still a little used to just being able to set her down wherever I want from the area. Oh, we have what looks like a uh, command and wow, I was going to say command and conquer. Command and communications bunker. We have soldiers which look like they're actually moving. I mean, obviously, their little sprites aren't moving, but maybe their uh, position is moving. Uh, we have an M48. Oh, we have another F-22 and uh, there's the Aurora. So we'll, uh, we'll go take a seat next to them. And our wingman should be, yep, ease on his landing approach. So 1% thrust is, okay, it's using like next to no fuel, but it's not pushing me anywhere. 7% thrust? I don't want brakes on. 10. So I don't move unless I put in like 11% thrust. <laughs> and even then we're only moving at seven knots. I kind of doubt that, I feel like 1% should be enough to at least move me around on the ground, but there we go. See, now according to this, we're moving at 40 miles per hour, which is reasonable-ish for 10% thrust, and our wingman has touched down. Oh, there's two F-22s. Don't wanna run into the bunker. I don't know where our wingman's going to park, but uh, I think I know where I want to park. We're going to get nice and snug between these two. Probably come this way a little more. There we go. And our wingman is uh, taxiing his slow ass over. So, 
wonder, can I read those sprites? Uh, not really. I'm assuming one's gonna be strategic air command, maybe, but, uh... I don't know, this looks like it could be a satellite or a spider, depending on how you look at it. This looks like an arrow, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh... Alright, let's see. Wingman, where are you? Well, uh... Let's speed things up, get them over here a little bit faster. And hopefully he parked. It would be amazing if he parked between these two. Yep, those soldiers are moving. Oh, I think he's gonna park. Okay. He's gonna be a lame duck, I guess, but... There we go, that is... The first mission in the Egyptian campaign. So with that, let's go to uh, our debriefing. Debrief. Belusa Air Base. Date June 23rd. Mission Hourglass. Resolution success. You not only saved a valuable asset, you proved that the rebels have trained fighter pilots who are willing to engage U.S. aircraft. Congratulations on a successful mission. So, none of us took damage. We had four kills to our wingman's two. For us, that was, uh, I think, two F-16s and two F-5s, whereas our wingman took the true the two Mirage 2000s, I think. Uh, our missiles were unfortunately a little bit on the unreliable side, but that's okay. And uh, we'll just do some uh, maintenance on our F-22. And with that, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for next time, and we'll see you then.